John Quinn's Blood Sworn Books. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Three Rivers Books. Guys, I just finished this series. Now I know there's going to be a third book. Obviously, there's only one, two books here. But I just want to talk about these because I just finished them and I will say that they are outstanding. But there are some caveats and we're going to get into that. The first book we're going to talk about is The Shadow of the Gods. All right, Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. Now, if you are not a Norse or Viking fan, it's probably not going to be for you. It is very character centric, but this book kind of builds the world. It's going to start to introduce you to three main characters, the three main POVs. This is the first book in the series of The Blood Sworn. Now, before we even begin, there might be some spoilers in here. So if you're not a big fan of spoilers, then go ahead and put this on pause or go watch another review. We start with three POVs, three heroes, all right? They start off very low or small beginnings and then they kind of skyrocket up in the second book and we'll get to that in a second. You have Varg. Varg is what they would call a thrall or a slave, okay? He works on a farm, uh, gets into a little bit of trouble. He's looking for his sister. He winds up rolling into the nearest village and that's where his story begins he starts fighting uh because he needs to speak to a witch and he knows that the witch is the only person that could give him some kind of magical uh seance to try to locate his sister all right so that's kind of broad strokes right there all right uh and what he does is he winds up in the ring and the only way he could see this witch is to uh, fight one of the biggest guys that they have there, which happens to be part of the Bloodsworn. Okay, the Bloodsworn is this group of people. And you're gonna see that throughout the book that there are these groups or crews of warriors. Uh, think uh, Vikings, the movie. If you've ever seen Vikings, the movie, they have different towns, different clans, a lot of that. So Varg starts off as a absolute nobody. Turns out he fights one of the biggest guys in the ring to try to help find his sister and he becomes part of the crew. Then you have Elvar, who's actually a princess, but she leaves her family to go work with mercenaries. All right, so that's your number two. Uh, very high skilled warrior. She doesn't want to get married and get other lands for her dad. She's kind of one of those people that's kind of an individual. Uh, and she's already rolling with these mercenaries. She gets hired to go out and her father, when she finally comes back, her father gives her a choice. She's like, he's like, listen, you could stay here. I'll give you your own crew. I know that's what you want to do. You want to hang out with these warriors. I'll even make you head of my own crew. And then you could do that. But what this crew does is they actually go out and they find people that are quote unquote tainted. Tainted means that some, some of these people are, some of these people that are tainted have blood from the gods running in their blood. And what that means is a lot of the people that they're going out to capture are worth a lot of money and Elvis, Elvar's father likes to collect them, all right, for his protection or whatever it is. And again, makes them thralls slaves the way they control them is they put collars around their necks they have all this magic runes the, the, and you know it's a sense of power is what it is how do we take people that are tainted and make them do what i want them to do so they're either for protection or they're part of a warrior band or that kind of thing he even has people that are tainted that um are witches and warlocks that he keeps locked up all right so that's them that's elvar and the third one is orca orca is like the john wick of vikings all right she is awesome she's a little older gal but she is tainted now anybody in this world that is tainted is sort of on the run or wants to keep it on the down low obviously because people are out there trying to capture them, put collars around their neck, the collar controls who they are and who they belong to. So what they do is she used, she was part of a clan and her and her husband had a child and they're kind of like quiet village folk and they don't want anything to do with anybody. They're done with the fighting, they're done with the killing. They just want to be left alone on their farm. 
Their friend that's a fisherman also has two children and he gets into a scrape with one of the local lords, all right? He kicks his ass, however, uh, something happens to where the tainted bodyguard of the Earl gets involved, finds out that the husband, Orca's husband, I'm sorry, is tainted, and then they come to his house. Spoiler alert, they come to his house, take her son, and then kill him, all right? So now she's totally John Wick. Think puppy, think killed, think, you know, vengeance, and she is a badass. I mean, when I say badass, she doesn't stop, she doesn't hesitate, she just goes out and kills people. Like, she's so good at it, all right? So, those are your three main characters, okay? Um, what happens mostly during this book is that young children are being taken away. We don't know why, but they are being taken away for some specific purpose, all right? And that's what we're trying to look for. Now, again, there is magic. There's not too much magic in this book, but there's a lot more magic in this book. So let's talk about that. This book bleeds easily after this book. It goes right into this book and picks up where you left off with this, with this, with with the three heroes of the story. You will need a glossary, kind of figure out what words they are using. They're Old Norse mythology. Both of these books do come with maps, although be it they are just regular black and white maps. All right, they kind of tell you what's going on. You get, you also get introduced to things called tenors. I think they're called tenors, where there are like small bats. Um, one of the favorites or bodyguards of Orca is like this, uh, so I want to say a, a scorpion or he looks like a big fat bee. Uh, it's kind of funny. One of the things that I like about the battle scenes or the, the groups or the crews of Vikings is they actually have fun. Like it's a warrior's culture. I don't know if anybody's ever been in a fight or a battle or maybe a football team, but guys that kind of stick together, male and female, after they have this big battle scene, they start making jokes. They start, it's kind of like a battle buddies kind of ribbing, right? They get at each other. They bust each other's balls. It's freaking hysterical. Uh, so the three the three heroes kind of progress, right? So, so Varg starts to get trained, all right? So uh, the Bloodsworn take him in. He starts to get trained. They start going on bloody adventures together. He finds out also that, spoiler alert, everybody in the Bloodsworn is tainted they are people that have magical powers in their blood where mostly nature there's a lot of nature magic in this so what happens is um when they get their battle craze or their blood up or whatever it is they can call forth whatever animal is in their blood so you have a berserker which is the bear all right very very strong you have the Ufinter, if I said that correctly, which is the wolf, all right, very cunning. You have the fox, very sly. You have the hound, which is able to smell miles and miles and miles away. Good trackers, right? You have the eagle who can see. These are all traits. You have the rat who is very sly and can slip into kind of uh, little spaces, all right? All these animals are within these warriors or these tainted and throughout the whole book you run into them. Now, why did we need the children? We needed the children to raise gods. They took all the children to raise gods. Okay, so that means that they are taking these kids. They had to create some type of spell or seance in order to raise a god. Once they raise the dragon god, and I like the way he writes it, where she's not always in dragon form. She can revert back to a human form. And all the animals, including the uh, spiders and the tenors, they can all speak. They all speak English, which is kind of nice. You know, how she has this whole clan of worshipers. Also, they have to raise another god to fight a god. So the wolf gets also raised, all right? So they take this book and they go on this amazing journey. They wake up these gods and these gods now have their own following, all right? So obviously uh, the dragon sworn, they have people behind them. You have the wolf god that gets raised. You also have the rat god who was 
saved or somebody let him go and you have these fractions of warriors now and obviously the major baddie is the dragon queen or the dragon god and now they are walking the earth okay uh really really great books guys i don't want to drag this on too much because i want to make sure that you guys go out and buy these books I like his writing style. The words or the language is easy to read except for the Norse verbiage, I will say, but there is a glossary in each book. There are maps in each book. So the trope in this is very simple. You have a bunch of people that uh, come from strained backgrounds and wind up going on an adventure and becoming heroes looking for these kids, all right? Uh, they meet a lot of people along the way. Very easy to slip in the POVs. You have two brand new POVs that wind up in this book uh, and it is significantly bigger. But I sat there and I read through these books. The chapters are really small, so you don't have to worry about where did I leave off. The chapters are outstanding. It's only like, I think the chapters are like eight or 10 pages long, which makes it very easy to read. Uh, huge fan. I will give these books an eight out of 10. I think they are very well written. I think that John uses language that is very easy to follow and I can't wait for the third book. All right. I sat through this with a couple of sittings and just blazed through it. All right. It's just an easy read and it's a great adventure. So I'm a big fan of John Gwynn. I'm a big fan of the blood sworn. I would highly recommend these books. Thank you very much, guys. If you like this content, please put your comments down below, like, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. It really helps the algorithms. If you want to become a Patreon member, support the channel, please go ahead and do so. As always, guys, stay safe and keep reading.